All right, guys. Uh, welcome to Amaz's awesome. All right, let me try that again. God damn it. Welcome, everybody, to another tier list slash top heroes of Battlegrounds video. Uh, I really like Hearthstone Battlegrounds, as you all know, so I'm gonna make more content about it. And this video, we're gonna talk about the top 10 heroes in Battlegrounds right now that you have to pick. All right, there's a lot of trashy heroes, for sure. And there's a lot of uh, weird ones that require a lot of skill, but here I'm gonna break it down. Only the top 10 heroes, and I also have a tier list at the end. So when you go into Battlegrounds and you need to choose which one to win the most, uh, then you can just follow my tier list and uh, you can get all the easy MMRs, okay? So top 10 heroes, let's start with number 10, okay? Number 10 is George. So George has a very, very insane hero power in late game because uh, for four mana, he gives one of your minions Divine Shield permanently, right? So, like, Reno Divine Shield is, like, an insane mechanic in uh, Battlegrounds because it just gives your minion extra life. And um, that pretty much guarantees your big minions killing two things, in a sense. Or they can also trade with Divine Shields. Um, very, very powerful in builds that do not have um, Divine Shields by themselves. So, Vex can get Divine Shield very easily with their Magnetic guy. And uh, Murlocs can also get Divine Shield with, like, Adapt uh, Megasaur, right? But there are, um, Demons can never get Divine Shield properly, and Beasts can also not get Divine Shield properly. So, um, if you're building Beasts especially, then George becomes pretty insane. I mean, have you p tried putting a Divine Shield on your Hyena before? It's really, really awesome. I think I did that in the, you know, uh, Battlegrounds tournament before, in one of the games, and it just crushed it. So, if you're playing George, make sure you don't lose too much health early on because you have a late game hero power. Invest in a lot of gold to get these early game units, and then you can start just putting your divine shields on your on your strong units, like amalgams and junk bots and hyenas, you know, things that you don't want to die. All right, moving on to number nine. We've got the, e the easiest counter to George. It's Nefarian, okay? Nefarian has a hero power for one gold, that you basically deal with damage to all enemy minions at the start of that round. So it's not as persistent as uh, George, but it does clear all the Divine Shields, right? Like, Divine Shield is like the number one thing, like I said, in late game that just destroys everything. So Nefarian has an insane late game hero power, and also if you're facing a lot of mechs in your lobby, such as, uh, you know, if everybody's just building Cobalt Guardians and stuff like that. And Cobalt Guardians, they usually place them at the front line, right? So just, um, just yog them down, and it's really good. Now the reason, Yogg is not higher than A tier, or not even higher than this list. It's because um, he doesn't really do anything for your early and mid game, all right? Like, his hero power is very late game oriented, um, and it's also very specific. And if you're playing against smart people, they're going to position in a way such that Nefarian, is, the Nefarian hero power is not going to hurt them that much. So, um, yeah, I, I, I rate heroes that have more proactive game plans a little bit higher. And I also think that Nefarian's win rate is not that high, you know? Um, the win, win rates for heroes are higher if they're more consistent uh, in actually solidifying the early game. So I think Nefarian's good, but I also think that a lot of people overrate Nefarian a lot. So that, that, that's basically my spiel there. Okay, next up we have Racking. Uh, Racking has a passive hero power that gives uh, one of the tribes plus one plus two whenever you buy it. You always start with Beast, and then it rotates around randomly. So there's like demons, there's um there's beasts and there's also murlocs right and beasts murloc demons mechs okay yeah that, those four and then uh you start with beasts okay yeah um Racking is really strong because you don't need to pay for a plus one plus two right there's a lot of heroes that can buff your guys but you need to pay money but Racking doesn't okay sure it's a little bit rng because you need to like you know, it swaps every time, but you can lessen the RNG a little bit, okay? First of all, you can lessen the RNG of Wrecking by knowing that it always changes. So if it's mechs this round, and then you have a- and then your shop is full of non-mechs, and you want- and those units are pretty good, you can actually lock them, and there's a good chance that, you know, it turns into something you want, like Beast, for example, if there's a Hyena and a Rat Pack. Um, and- you getting a plus one plus two buff early on is just so huge, right? Like, buying a- Die, a, a, a uh, die wolf alpha in turn one like a three four is just gonna stomp and also alley cat you can also buy that and it gets plus one plus two so it's really really strong um so yeah wrecking is uh very very good uh late game it's not as good but mid game is also pretty good right like this this hero bar is really good if you 
can put it on like a mech that's divine shield. You get you can kind of double dip on it, right? Since you know it gets plus one plus two twice with divine shield. So um, yeah, um, wrecking is uh, pretty awesome. Next up, we've got number six. Oh no, sorry, number seven. Yeah. Next up, we've got number seven. It's the curator. Now, curator before when we first started playing the game, curator was like S tier. Well, I actually rated this as the best hero in the game, but. As people started playing the game better, lobbies start getting a little bit more aggressive. So yeah, sure, getting an amalgam is really good for late game because you can just put all your buffs on it and then just, it's, it's like a late game house, right? It's like a powerhouse bomb. You can give it divine shield, poisonous, taunt, everything. Uh, but there is one problem, is that you cannot really get to the late game that easily. Now, obviously, Curator is a really good hero you should still play because it's number 7. It's still A tier for me. But just know that um, you might get stomped, all right? Uh, there, are a lot more, there are a lot of heroes that can like, just win early game really, really fast. And um, you shouldn't be greedy, all right? If you see a buff for your Amalgam, you should just buy it. So that's the 2-4 Demon. Uh, the Overseer, that is. If you find Zubot, you should buy it. If you find Howlmaster, you should buy it, all right? Um, just, just buy your shit, put it on your Amalgam, and you're very, very happy. All right, onwards to the top six. Now, top six, I've rated these all in S tier. I think they're all insane. Um, number six is Dancing Daryl. Now, Dancing Daryl might be higher or lower, depending on how good you are in the game. Now, Dancing Daryl has a playstyle that's very, very different from everybody else. So, if you pass on Dancing Daryl, I think that's okay too. I don't think it's that bad. Um, the way to play him is that you need to plan out for some explosive ass turns. Um, basically, you want to buy out the shops until there's only one hero, uh, one unit left. Uh, preferably something that is really good with buffs. So something like, you know, Rat Pack, anything of Divine Shield or Amalgam, you know. You want to buff it to like godly amounts. So you want to sell a lot of shit, buy that thing, and then place it on the board, and then you just win early game. That's basically early game. You find a, you want to buy a lot of tokens, sell them off to Bob, build a thing, and then you can also dance later. Okay, the later dance units would be like stuff like Cobalt Guardian, um, you know, stuff like the magnetic stuff. Okay, if you if you actually give a lot of hats and a lot of buffs to the magnetic guys, it turns basically into like a battle cry, right? It turns into like um, like a super hound master if you may, if you put it on the annoyal module. So, uh, yeah, with, uh, with Dancing Daryl, you have to be very careful about selling your stuff because you usually want to buy out the shop, leave some uh, important units in the shop, and then just sell everything and make that work. Um, also, uh, another tip for Daryl is that you shouldn't level too much. Um, everything you, every, every time you see a token and you don't have a full board, you should just buy the token and play it. Because not only does it actually give you more fodder to give more hats later, the biggest thing, the biggest thing is that you actually survive the early game, right? Er super early game for Daryl is hard. But then when, it, when, when, you, when you dance the first round and you get a big-ass unit, you're basically just set. So yeah, once again, look for the mini-bots, the amalgams, the rat packs. Those are the best hits for your hats. And if you think about it another way, every time you buy an alley cat and sell both the alley cat tokens, it's plus four, plus four, right? That's insane, right? Buy the alley cat for three gold, sell the alley cat for two gold, plus four, plus four. So one gold, Gives you a plus four, plus four. That's why Dancing Daryl is insane. All right. Uh, and of course, if you don't know how to play Daryl, I would just recommend trying it. Or watching some of my YouTube videos, dude. I, I have a lot of good Daryl videos. Oh my God. Just, all right. My editor's going to link some below. Thanks, Camus. All right. Uh, number five, we have Patchwork. Now, you would maybe think that Patchwork doesn't, isn't really that good because this hero power doesn't actually do anything. It just gives you extra health. Uh, and it does, it, it's generally kind of bad, right? However... Extra health in this game is very flexible, okay? First of all, extra health means that just if everybody's playing normally, right? You have a better chance to place higher because you have more health, so that you don't die as fast, right? So it's good for your MMR. Secondly, um, you can kind of... You, you can kind of play around your health a bit. So say you have a round where you want to be a bit more greedy. You got a triple, but you have no more gold. So... Or you have maybe you have three gold or whatever. You can buy another unit, freeze the triple, and then wait until the next turn to level up and buy the triple for you know to spike a little bit harder, right? Um, there's more leeway when you play patchwork, and patchwork is also very very good in in all sorts of MMRs, dude. Because when you first start out, 
you're not gonna know what to do, right? Uh, you're just gonna buy random units. You're not, you, you're, um, your your synergies are not gonna be that good. And also, you're gonna place against you're gonna play against other people who just started out too, because you know the MMR system matches you kind of uh, uh, um, to, the, to the same MMR. So extra health is always good. And you don't have to worry about like, oh, should I min-max on the hero power or whatnot? Like, Patrick is just super solid. Um, definitely recommend. I think this is great. All right. Next up, we have AFK. Uh, AFK is number four in our list. And uh, yeah, her hero power is pretty special. You pass the first two turns, and then you get a, a, and then you get to discover a tier three unit and a tier four unit. Um, I talked about this a lot with the, um, the Hearthstone guys, uh, and the general consensus is you want to just go with the 4 drop first, and then you just go with 3 drop, because there's more payoffs at 4. Uh, the payoffs at 4 are like Security Rover, uh, Iron Sensei, um, you know, um, what else? 4 drops, Hydra, Hydra is a good one, and then you want to discover 3. Because 3 drops, the only payoff is like Pack Leader, that's like the biggest one. So if you discover the 4 drop first, like, um, you know, for example, like uh, Iron Sensei, then you can take a 3-drop mech, for example. Or if you get a Security Rover first, you can get a Khadgar. It's actually easier to, that way, um, better than the other way around. So just discover a 4-drop first. Uh, another thing about AFK is, anytime in the first two turns you see a Token Maker, so Alley Cat or the Murloc, um, I think it's... What's it called? Murloc Tide Hunter, I think? Um, you want to freeze, okay? Even though it doesn't let you buy any units because you're AFK, you can still freeze. So it's very important to do that because on turn 3, you want to buy the token maker, sell with the token, and then you want to level up because you have exactly 5 gold, right? So that's going to actually get you really, really, uh, a really, really solid early game. And also helps if you have a cat guard, right? So yeah, make sure you keep that in mind. All right. Next up, it's the top three. And for me, the top three is not even close. I think this top three, these top three heroes, can also be in different orders depending on metas or like if people find out something. But these top three heroes are like indisputably the best three heroes in my opinion. All right, like if you find one of these, you're gonna be super happy. So let's see what they are. Okay, so first of all, let's go with number three is Syndragosa. Syndragosa is ridiculous, like actually ridiculous, okay? So, what you do is, okay, first of all, the hero part is, whenever you freeze the shop, the whole shop gets plus one, plus one, okay? So, what that basically means is that every time you press the freeze button, which is zero gold, okay? It doesn't cost anything. Zero gold. You give all the units plus one, plus one. So, that is actually ridiculous, okay? Um, it buffs everything in the shop. So it doesn't it doesn't just buff one unit, and you don't have to use it if you don't want to, right? If if it's if you don't get any good units, you don't need to freeze. But it turns a lot of good units to, it, it turns a lot of like mediocre units to like insane stuff like anything of divine shield, right? Like a mini bot getting a plus one plus one, and even like Resh's protector like getting plus one plus one is ridiculous. Um, Rat pack becomes ridiculous. Anything like even Cobalt guardians, security rovers, anything that can use the plus one plus one, even better than just a normal unit. It becomes like crazy and it gives you so much survivability. And there is one more thing, which is insane. The freeze carries over. So if you double freeze, that unit gets plus two plus two. Okay, in this game, plus two plus two is worth three uh, it's worth two gold, okay? Because usually when you buy a unit like Houndmaster or you know um Vermin Sensei or you know the the Steambot Clunk Jank, you know, whatever that card call is called. Yeah, the Clunk Bot or whatever. Um, you basically buy it because you want a plus two, plus two, right? And you can sell it. So it's basically two gold. Syndragosa can actually give you units plus two, plus two without spending any gold. And you can also buff multiple units at the same time, which is ridiculous. Okay, so a good play pattern for Syndragosa is the game starts, you buy a unit, you freeze. And then you level up, you freeze, and then next turn you have two units that are plus two, plus two. So you can just sell whatever you bought turn one, and then buy the two that you've frozen. So that's a very, very strong start for Syndra Goza. And that's actually one of the worst starts too, right? So um, buying the worst unit out of the opening is actually not bad. And if you have more token makers, then even better, right? Because you can just buy more shit. But no, Syndra Goza is great. And you should actually want to freeze more when you have Syndra Goza. Alright, next up, we've got probably my favorite, 
my favorite top tier hero. I have it on number two because number one has there's, there's a better one, a more consistent one. But number two, freaking Yogger's Poggers, man. Oh my god. If you see me stream or see my highlight videos or whatnot, every time I play Yogg, I play really, really well. And there is a reason for this. It's because Yogg's hero power is ridiculous, okay? So his hero power is two gold, okay? For two gold, you get a random unit in the shop and it gets plus one, plus one. Now, some people might think that, oh, it's RNG. How can it be good? You, know, you want to get you know, your tribe synergies. You want to get your triples. Why is that good? Well, let me tell you why it's good, okay? First of all, you get a one gold discount. Buying a unit costs three. You all cost two. Secondly, you're getting a buff. You get a plus one, plus one. And thirdly, you don't really care what you buy in the early game, okay? Early game is all about establishing the board and making sure you get as much as you can, okay? So... The, the way that Yogg um, snowballs is that, okay, turn one, turn two is pretty obvious, right? Like most people just buy a unit turn one and then level up turn two. Okay, whatever. However, turn three, turn three is where a lot of different, lots of people do different shit, okay? Yogg, however, has one of the most amazing turn threes. Um, Yogg can hero power. Get a random unit, give it plus one, plus one, and also buy another unit. That is the best start you can have for any, um, any hero on the list, right? Because it also gets plus one, plus one. It's even better. Um, you just get so much units. So, so many units at the early game level where people usually only have three units and you have four. If you have a token or, or something like that, right? Uh, and it, it's just... You're not going to lose early game, alright? And late game is fine. Because you just spend a, lo a lot of two goals by three gold units, right? And you don't need to click your hero part at all late game. It doesn't matter. Just pretend you're patchwork late game, okay? So you're basically trading kind of like 20 health if you're playing patchwork for a very solid early game. You get what I mean? You see what I mean now? You are making your early game more consistent so that you can get to the late game easier. And getting to the late game is the name of the game in Battlegrounds right now. So yeah, Yogg. Freaking amazing, amazing champion, amazing hero, whatever you call it. Um, you should really try it out. And you should just use the hero power more, you know, just, just income. Okay, number one. Best hero in the game right now. Okay, it, once again, I think it's pretty close uh, for top three. But the best hero in the game right now is freaking Brad, okay? Okay, that, that, this guy, this guy deserves some clap, okay? Brand is just ridiculous. All right, uh, for Brand, passive hero power. Every time you buy a battle cry unit and play it, so you play a battle cry unit, something random gets plus one plus one after the battle cry. Okay, so this is first of all free free buffs for for units you're already gonna play. The best units in this game have battle cries, okay? Because they all give buffs and stuff like that. So you're gonna you're not gonna worry about the battle cry part. You just you just naturally play the game and it'll work. Okay, you don't need to think about it. Secondly, we're super well early game because token makers have battle cries. The two three murloc that costs one star has a battle cry. Um, you once again just dominate early game, right? There is a clear pattern to all these top three heroes. Why they are good is because they don't need to spend any money or even they just spend money at a discount, right? They cheat on money and they cheat on stats. That's why they are the best heroes. Um, you know, if you look at win rates and stuff like that, I don't even know. I, I haven't even looked at win rates before, but if, I'm sure if there's like a win rate or something like that, then these three heroes will always be at the top because, you know, they, 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 they just kind of cheat, you know? They don't pay money for their goods. They get extra buff things. And, you know, every time you play against them, you're like, holy shit, why is their board so insane? And mine is it. It's super early game, right? Well, because it's the hero powers, okay? So, yeah, Bran is better than Yogg in the sense that this hero power still works early, uh, late game, right? And you don't have to pay money for it. It's just so natural. The buff is just so natural. So you don't even need to like purposely do a specific tribe because every tribe has um, battle cries. Okay, Beast probably has the least amount of battle cries, but dude, see brand, pick brand. Okay, brand is insane. And um, yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching the top ten hero list. Here is a tier list for you in the end. Okay, right, right here, yeah, on the screen. Um, I did not order how good the F tier heroes are because they're all garbage. Um, but 
the um the positioning for S A and B tier, they are organized from left to right. So Brand is the best, and Daryl is the worst for the S tier ranking. So you can just read them like across, and it works that way. Okay, and um, yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video. And uh, the next top battleground list video we have, or it's gonna be you know tackling other things. Maybe I'm gonna talk about some cards, like top cards to pick in arena uh, in, in battlegrounds, or like you know we have a lot of ideas. I don't want to spoil too much. But yeah, thanks for watching this video, and get your free MMRs in this awesome list!